This week we're on Dripping Springs Lake and the fish are in shallow water and I'm talking dirt shallow water. We're going to be throwing a variety of techniques from stick worms to swim jigs and everything in between. I really hope we put a couple of those real big large mouth in the boat but you're not going to know unless you watch. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Fish TV. I'm your guest host, Andrew Upshaw. I'm filling in for Barry this week, and I'm sure glad I am. I'm on a really special lake, Dripping Springs Lake just southwest of Oak Mulgee. It's a small to mid-sized lake, but one thing that's not small about it is the bass. This thing has giant bass in it, especially for a lake in Oklahoma. Today, the fish are in very shallow water. I'm gonna use a variety of techniques to try to put them in the boat for you. We'll also have this week's fishing reports from your insider reporters. And today, we're fishing a really special boat. This is a low 198 aluminum bass boat. This thing is loaded to the brim. Let's go ahead and get this thing locked. Get in the water, get it set up. I'm gonna toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Great news, these salooner tables are indicating excellent game fish activity both days this weekend. Peak daytime action begins at 11.01 Saturday and 11.54 Sunday. The best time for fishing in the dark will begin at 11.26 on Saturday and midnight Sunday. This weekend looks to hold some of the best game fish activity of the month, so don't miss it. The sun will rise at 625 and set at 827. In evenings, we'll have a moon that is only 1% visible. Stick around, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way, plus I'll return with Bassmaster Elite Angler Todd Otten to answer this week's Ask the Pro questions. Stay with us. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boats. Welcome to Low Country. Ooh, uh, man, biggest of the day so far. Can't beat that, man. Check this baby out right here. Whew, she's a good one. Nice Dripping Springs bass. Here we are in central Oklahoma right now. We're on Dripping Springs Lake. This lake is known for giant bass. Now granted, is this a big one? No, but it's known for giant bass. The other day we talked to a guy that, that caught an 11 pounder on this lake, an 11 pound bass. This one's probably in that two and three quarter to three pound range. And what we're doing today, if you notice, this lake is surrounded by reeds. If you look right over here, you're gonna see a lot of reeds, a lot of different grass mixture. Well, when that's the case, those fish are gonna live shallow. This, this place reminds me of Florida. And Florida is a grass, you know, grassy impoundments all over the place. And so what I'm doing today is I'm, I'm targeting isolated little hot spots is what I like to call them. So if you look around, you're gonna see some scattered reeds, some little grass patches, you're gonna see some stumps, you're gonna see all kinds of little things, little features. You're flipping these isolated targets and what I like to call high percentage targets. And the more high percentage targets that I can flip in a day, the better the chance that I'm gonna catch a bass uh, you know throughout the day and, and a lot of bass and a lot of good ones. That's just the start of today We're gonna catch a lot. Make sure you stay tuned Well, shore fishing has been great throughout the southeast coast and it's some really wonderful family fun action for a lot of different species I'll be right back with all the fishing details, but first this from our good friends at Mirror Lure Mirror Lure building quality saltwater lures since 1937 including the new line of Miradine plugs. Turn on the bite anytime 
tie on a mirror lure. Well, there's some great family fishing available in southeast Georgia uh, near the near St. Simons Island in Brunswick. Uh, according to Captain Greg Hill, it's my good friend down there. Uh, Greg's been catching uh, lots of spade fish, Atlantic spade fish, using jelly balls to chum them up with. He kind of anchors up on some of the near shore reefs and uh, to be used as jelly ball pieces. And they're really good to eat. And they're, f they're absolutely tough fighting fish. Also in Georgia, Greg says that the king mackerel fishing has starting to turn on in some of those near shore and further offshore reefs and wrecks. Uh, they're catching some cobia around those same areas and bottom fish too. Over in Alabama, Captain Patrick Garmerson on Mobile Bay says it spotted sea trout fishing continues red hot there. Most of these fish are being caught in topwater plugs like mirror lures, uh, top dogs and uh, Zara spooks. They like those bone colors, but any kind of a muted, kind of a silver off-white color works very well. You want to fish them in a zigzag fashion across the surface. Keep that lure moving at all times. Walk the dog system, that's called. Also, uh, shallow running diving plugs work real well for the trout. And uh, those overcast days where it's real kind of hazy in the morning, it can be really good fishing. Even when there's a little bit of a chop on the water, uh, it tends to turn those uh, trout on and they come into the shallower waters. Patrick says that uh, the reefs and the rigs, the limestone reefs and rigs uh, in Mobile Bay and about 8 to 10 feet of water have been the hot spots for spotted sea trout there. Well, that's it for the southeast coast. Get out in the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Here's one. Oh, there we go. There's another nice one. Woo. Oh man, that's a good one there. Whoa, oh man. Ooh, uh, man, biggest of the day so far. Can't beat that, man. Flipping up here on Dripping Springs Lake, known as one of the big bass lakes in Oklahoma. If you haven't been here, it's about an hour south of Tulsa and just southwest of Oak Mulgee. The cool thing about this area, if the fish aren't biting here on Dripping Springs, you can actually just trailer up, get put your boat on the trailer and go right up to Lake Oak Mulgee, which is another really good fishery. So that's the kind of the advantage of this area is you can pull up here, you can catch fish like this, but if they happen to not be biting, you can go up there and a lot of times they're biting up there when they're not biting here. But another really nice bass. Let's get this thing put back. You know, setup is king uh, whenever you start thinking about flipping a bait, especially a lighter bait. Another nice one. Golly, man, like, just look how wide that fish is. Getting your hand around him, perfect spot. Hookup ratio is really good with this, this structure bug. Another really good fish. I mean, not a bad one at all. Let's take a look at this one. Let's get him back in the water real quick. Set him down there. I want to talk to you a little bit about my setup here. My setup, you know, setup is king uh, whenever you start thinking about flipping a bait, especially a lighter bait uh, with like an eighth ounce weight, you need a rod that can handle it. And I'm not just saying handle and setting the hook. I'm talking about the actual act of flipping the bait and making sure you have that perfect presentation in the water to where the bait's not getting pulled up too much or moved out of that strike zone. In this case, I turned to only one rod. I just, it's one that I have a ton of confidence in. It's a 7.6 Magnum Heavy Cover Team Loose Custom Pro Rod. And I'll say that again, it's a lot of words there. Magnum Heavy Cover is the rod. It's a 7.6 Heavy Action. It's a little bit longer rod and it's a stiffer rod, but it has just enough tip to where I can load that bait up and make that perfect, accurate, silent flip into that spot. But the, the, the cool thing about that is it's extremely sensitive and it gives you that perfect hook set for fishing fluorocarbon. So if you notice, anybody else that flips, especially when they're flipping braid, you want a rod that's much more parabolic, 
that gives you a little bit when you when you're flipping because that braid has no no stretch to it whatsoever and you got to have that rod that gives a little bit more in the case of flipping fluorocarbon i want a little bit stiffer stick but with a little bit of less tip so like an 80 20 rod and what i mean by that is 80 percent backbone and 20 percent tip and that's exactly what you're looking for when you're flipping whether it's light or heavy cover if you're flipping fluorocarbon like i am today the other big key ingredient when you're flipping is a fast gear ratio reel this happens to be a team loose hyper mag uh, it's a 7 5 to 1 gear ratio reel to me I can do anything and everything I want to do with a 7 5 to 1 gear ratio they make up to an 8 3 to 1 do you need an 8 3 to 1 I don't know I, I the only advantages I can see is flipping or frogging but I've gotten so used to throwing that 7 5 to 1 that I really try to stay away from that norm so basically the way I look at it is I try to keep my reels in a very specific gear ratio whether it's five five to one six eight to one or seven five to one and those are the three speeds that i throw all the time and i if i get outside of that realm like it seems like i get a little bit too complicated and i, I miss a lot more fish so if you're gonna do this lightweight flipping make sure you still use a little bit beefier gear beefier line because you are having to, to bear down on them pretty hard and it's extremely important to get that hook set perfect every time. And the only way you can do that is with a big stick. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolina's report. This week brought to you by Crazy System Marina, the leader in water sports along the Grand Strand. Come down and live like a local with us. Visit crazysystemmarina.com for more information on fishing trips, rental boats, kayaks, whatever it is you want to do, we've got it all right here at Crazy Sister Marina. Let's talk North Carolina. Let's go to Moorhead, North Carolina. The 62nd annual Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament just contested there. Incredible fish brought to the scales and caught and released. But the winning boat, Pelagic Hunter, a center console out of North Carolina, taking home the top prize for a 495 pound beast they killed and brought to the scales. Not quite that 500 pounder that would have brought home over a half a million dollars, but they took home nearly 300,000. The big winner was Sea Striker, who was all in across the board and brought home over a million dollars in prize money last week. A lot of fish being caught out deep, out in a thousand foot plus, but they're looking for that water temperature break and that's the same thing you wanna do if you're in South Carolina or North Carolina. Look for those temperature breaks. You're gonna find weeds, you're gonna find colors, and you're gonna find the fish right now. Coming back on shore, and let's get in South Carolina, on the beaches right now. Our good buddies at Apache Pier in Myrtle Beach have reported incredible king macro bites starting to happen on the beach. Those schools of Manhattan are working the beach and the fish are there with them. If you wanna get out by boat, get out, follow those schools of bait, and concentrate with big baits outside of those schools. You're gonna have a lot of luck catching some big king mackerel this time of the year. This has been your Carolina's Report, brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish martyr, not harder and keep your chaos organized. We'll be right back in just a moment. First though, we want to pass along some of your Big Catch of the Week photos. These entries didn't win, but we still wanted to share some of the great fish catches from around the area. Be sure to stick around for this week's winner at the end of today's show. We're coming right back. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls Out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Man, look at this fish. Look at this one. That's a good one there. And that's exactly where you want them hooked. Nice one there. Ugh. Man, oh man, what a day. Oh my gosh. 
another nice dripping springs bass man there's nothing better than a great flipping bite you flip that bait up in there and you can't even you don't even feel it hit the bottom it just your line goes boom and man i mean it's not a big one but golly what an awesome day on the water you know i want to point out something to you real quick let's get this fish back real fast As the day goes on, you can't get stuck on particular things that you did even that morning. So earlier this morning, I'm flipping these reeds and you literally could flip any reed you wanted to at any time. Well, the sun got high, the fishing got tough because I was doing the exact same thing. Well, I was fishing the sunny reeds. And what I mean by that is the sun was hitting them directly. There was no shade line, nothing. Well, I went around a corner earlier flipped up in one shade line caught a fish and that immediately clued me in is you need to target shade so i came into a different pocket i found some shady reeds and i've now caught two fish down the shade reed line and if you notice on this particular shade reed line there's a lot of inconsistencies in the reeds there's a lot of little cuts a little jet outs of reeds a lot of different features that make these bass hold on this particular stretch you know not all reed stretches are the same just like if you're fishing hydrilla or bank grass or bushes not all places that you fish are the same even though from the a way back looking in they look the same so in this particular case this this bank has a little bit more shade has more jet ends for those fish to ambush what i'm i'm assuming is is bluegill so if you flip that that real light eighth ounce weight and you flip it on those little intricate differences along these shaded reed lines you're going to see a lot of extra results when you're flipping that bug hey everybody welcome to this week's tennessee mississippi and alabama fishing report this week's fishing report is brought to you by th marine um, man what an incredible product line uh, check out thmarine.com um, if you're a pleasure boater, uh, a, a fisherman, or a serious angler, you're going to find some stuff over there that's going to revolutionize how you spend your time on the water. Uh, go to thmarine.com and check out everything they have to offer. Uh, with that being said, let's talk fishing for a minute. You know, let's start in Mississippi. Grenada and a spider rig is hard to beat this time of year. Those offshore fish, um, you can get out there and, 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 you know, rig around and get your depth right, get your colors right, and there's going to be groups of fish. In Alabama, let's go to Lay Lake. Um, big spots, big large mouth. I love to throw a swim bait. I love to throw a big spinner bait this time of year. Three quarter, one ounce spinner bait. Uh, in Tennessee, center hill, and let's go at night. Uh, the nighttime bite's getting really good there. Um, single Colorado blades. Um, if it's a dark night, throw a black blade. If it's a moonlit night, throw a gold blade. Come on up here and get you some. We'd love to see you. God bless. There we go. That's a big one. There we go. That's a nice one there. God, he thumps that. Man, look at this fish. Look at this one. That's a good one there. And that's exactly where you want them hooked. And, you know, that's something important about flipping this Texas rig around is finding that perfect balance of hook and weight size. And, I mean, that's a, a good bass right there. A three and three three and a half pounder good tournament bass you know one important tip when you're pitching and flipping and now there is a difference and i'm not going to go into the the differences right now but when you're pitching a bait when i when i'm sitting here and i'm, I'm going through the art of pitching so i'm i'm pitching that bait to the reed line okay if you notice right there i did it with my left hand well every once in a while you're going to see me switch to my right hand and do it it is important to learn how to pitch with both hands you know and, and it takes a lot of practice but there is a certain time for both of them and and one instance is if you're approaching a reed line or a bush line from this direction you want to be flipping with your left hand that way you can set to the right and sometimes for that longer distance i want to be flipping or pitching with my right hand because for one i'm a little bit more accurate one way that you can practice this is a really simple method of getting a Folgers coffee can or any type of coffee can that has a six to eight inch opening, a big opening, 
and just start pitching into it and, and start short at first you know start 10 feet eight feet and just pitch 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 and then switch hands and just keep practicing this is a perfect thing to do if you're stuck in the house right now and you can really maximize your learning experience without being on the water so next time you're out there and you want to learn to do something new pick up that pitching stick and start pitching with both hands and you're going to thank me later <laughs>